pot merchant must pay partner 6.4 million over ownership spat. And as I was reading this, <clears throat> it reminded me that we've talked a couple of times about um, federal courts and whether you want a marijuana case in front of them. Because to be blunt, they're schizophrenic as hell. And this is another sign of their schizophrenia. Um, and it involves uh, a partnership dispute where one wouldn't honor their contract to the other. And, you know, there was a hidden agreement to keep them out of the licensing authority's view. And it turns out that uh, we had some real shitty lawyers in all this, in my opinion. So let me back up a little bit here. Uh, the plaintiff and the main defendant here have almost the same last name. So what they, they call him is Mackie and Josh. Josh is the plaintiff, and he had a dispensary in Colorado for years, earned some money, got some business experience. And as Marilyn opened up for legal cannabis, he partnered up with a, another guy whose last name's almost the same, but his first name's Mackie. But Josh and Mackie formed doctor's orders for Maryland, and it turns out that Josh was on deferred judgment for a misdemeanor drug case, and they thought that might screw up uh, the Maryland licensure. So they had a secret agreement. He would surrender all of his interests. I don't know if this is an LLC or C Corp, but he was going to surrender all of his interests temporarily until they got licensed and all the interests came back to him and everything's going to be golden. They transferred his interest, and I'll be damned if his partner, Mackie, decided that, well, I ain't going to give you shit now. So um, they got their license in Maryland, but... You know, the, the plaintiff was not given his shares back. He was on the outside looking in, and it seemed to be pretty successful. They set up an LLC in Maryland called Trellis, where all the interest ran through. And this, you know, it's more complicated than today's discussion. It's pretty typical to have agreements off the books if you've got somebody who may have something that they don't uh, want to tell the licensing authorities about at the local level. Uh, and then afterwards, they spring up and they run these businesses. And, you know, it's not always kosher, but it happens. Well, when he did, when the plaintiff, uh, uh, Josh, didn't get his money, he sued in federal court. Well, I try to stay out of federal court just because you don't know what you're going to get a judge who decides that anything and everything violates the Controlled Substances Act. We can't help you here. Or you're going to get a sympathetic court like we have here. This is filed in Colorado. Uh, in a federal court in Colorado, and the case actually went to trial. And all through the trial, no one ever questioned whether the federal court had what we call standing subject matter jurisdiction to, to hear this case. So they go through trial, get a $6.4 million judgment against Mackey and his company, and nobody appeals. It's, you know, they're they're not paying. So Josh goes into court under Rule 69, which is getting execution orders. And this is when shit really gets real, because I've done this a couple of times. You get a judgment and no one's paying. I go back into court, get a debtor exam, find out their accounts. We get an order from the court. We walk over there and empty their accounts with an order. And people tend to get real upset about that. But hey, you got a judgment against you. You don't pay. You should expect to have someone come take your shit. Hey, well, they issued an order uh, executing against assets, and that's when they got new lawyers, and the new lawyers decided, hang on for a second, these guys don't have standing here because we can't offer them a remedy. There's no controversy we can fix here for them, and they don't. the court doesn't have subject matter jurisdiction because of the Controlled Substances Act. This is the first time after the case had been tried, no one appealed, and here we are, you got an order of execution, and all of a sudden, oh, this is a big problem in federal court. Well, this particular federal court um, decided that, no, we're not going to buy this bullshit. We can fashion a remedy here because the remedy is money damages. We don't have to scratch and sniff where the money comes from. This is a basic contract dispute. You agreed to do something. You didn't do it. We used your numbers to find how much the value of the contract uh, breach was. And this particular court said, nah, we're not buying this. You're going to pay the money. Okay. Um, so that that's where the, the court left it. But the lessons here are, if I was going to advise a company, you do not want to be in federal court having a piss and match over a cannabis company. Well, if you live in different states, it becomes very difficult. 
That's why we have what we call diversity jurisdiction in federal court. The substantive law of the state applies, but you use federal procedures, somebody lives in a different state. Okay. We, we don't know how this is going to turn out because this is going to go to the appellate court. We have an appeals decision in California, I mean, in the Ninth Circuit here, where they allow this to go forward. That's where the Colorado is that we're going to allow this to go forward because we have a recent Ninth Circuit opinion that allows federal jurisdiction. But that's not the end of all this. Uh, and one of the other themes here is be careful who you trust. I don't know if this agreement, this off the books agreement was in writing. Uh, I'm going to say it was because the court found uh, liability fairly clearly here. Uh, but I've seen these agreements be off the books and they're hard to enforce because they're basically liars contest. You want this stuff in writing. And the other part of this that be careful of is that uh, you may have a lawyer it doesn't mean you have a good lawyer. Okay? And if you go all the way through trial and forget to raise certain defenses, it turns out your new lawyer goes, hey, hang on, you should have raised this or that defense. Like, well, that's why we have malpractice insurance. So be careful who you get in bed with uh, because they may up you <laughs> in the end. Be careful where you have your, your hearings or your case go because federal court's schizophrenic and be careful of the lawyers that you hire because just because you got a law license doesn't doesn't mean you know what you're doing in a courtroom. We've had some recent examples at the at the um, national level where some attorneys just screwed a case up so badly <clears throat> that I'm wondering. Uh, I hope their malpractice insurance will cover a 500 million dollar loss. Oh, anyway, back at you. What do you guys think about this? Be careful of the lawyer you hire and get out. Don't go to federal court if you can help it. So back at you guys. What do you think? Man, Dale, I mean, this sounds this sounds like a lot of uh, social equity contracts that I'm familiar with. <clears throat> well, and you and I both know I've negotiated some of these off the books mm -hmm. agreements where yep. you live there or you're the right color or whatever. We'll give you 10 grand to stand there and look pretty and say you're a 51 percent owner. And as soon as that license is granted, you're on the quickest bus exactly. to a <clears throat> non sanctuary Timbuk city. Yep. To Timbuktu. That's right. That's right, Dale. Did I, I, we got I mean, I guess my first question is here. Aren't they putting themselves in a precarious position by having a situation where this off the books agreement is now being entered into evidence in a federal proceeding? Like, aren't they providing evidence that they more or less defrauded the state of Maryland during the application process? Well, <clears throat> that was actually litigated in trial and judge didn't put much stock in it. Um, now, I've seen some agreements that are clearly in violation of our rules and regulations here in California. I don't know what their rules are there, but I've had many people want me to help them, you know, set up a company where they run it off the books. And the answer is the fuck I will. I, get, I maintain my license through federal prison. I don't need your bullshit anymore. No, I'm not <laughs> going to do it. But <clears throat> I, I, you know, I just don't have a problem telling them no. You know, I don't need to be back in prison or lose my license. Not everybody does that. And it it's just not clear to me in every jurisdiction if these licensing authorities are specific enough to capture some of the minds of these fucking criminals that I've had to work with who go, oh, it says I can't do this, but there's got to be a loophole somewhere. I'll find it or I'll just keep it off the books and it'll be fine. No, you get caught, you can get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, man, I, I just know so many different uh, companies that have these different types of like side agreements that it's like we have one agreement that we submit to these different licensing agencies and we have a whole nother agreement that we actually operate by. Oh, yeah, it's 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 common, as mm -hmm. you know, and I've yeah. negotiated some of these. I've had people call me up, said I'm female, I'm black, I'm in the residence, I'm in the right place. I got a marijuana felony, whatever. I qualify. Um, so can you get me some money? Mm hmm. They don't want to run the business. They just want to be there and look pretty and have the right requirements and then get money. And I've gotten some of them quarter million dollars just for staying there and look pretty. Yeah. So it's like paying me was worthwhile. It's completely illegal as far as I'm concerned at a 30,000 foot level because mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're defrauding the local government. But 
as a yeah. as a verified social equity applicant, I think in San Francisco and Sonoma County, I just want to raise my hand and say that I am available to stand someplace and look pretty for a quarter million dollars. My son introduced me to a recent term called look maxing. I am willing to bleach my teeth yet again. I'm, I'll even do a little Botox. Should go get some. Uh, go, go get some veneers. Look maxing. I, I, I will do some Botox. I might even lift a few weights if you need my biceps to be a little more puffy. Um, creatine, quarter million dollars, holler at your boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. I got a marijuana felony. You know, I'm looking for some income. Yeah. Uh, holler at me. Throw that money in my trunk. I'll be happy to take it. Oh, man. I, yeah, man, I got plenty sure, in the trunk sure too, okay? I'm looking make, real make sure yummy. Uh, Make sure y'all support uh, Dale's OnlyFans account. Yeah, dropping the link. So. <laughs> We're gonna throw it. Yeah, my federal prison was hard on me, guys. It was hard on me. I bet. How hard? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Only thing funny. I got's a law license. That's I got an ex-wife now and a, and a law license. So, so you're saying I, I went I, I went to the slammer and all I got was this lousy law license? Is that what you're telling us, Dale? Yeah. Well, I actually activated it in prison. <laughs> It's because it, it pissed off the security folks inside prison. Well, not to mention, <laughs> not, well, not to mention, long. not to mention, Dale. If you if you activated it in there, oh, I mean, man. at the same time too, then that 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 just uh, basically gives you free commissary from all the inmates from doing all the legal work for them because there is a ton of legal work. That's like the best place for a lawyer to be to get clients. Well, I accepted food and uh, you know haircuts and things like that. Exactly, but you're styling. Taking, taking direct money can get your ass whipped. So I just I do it for free. You want to give me something fine? Food and is then all money. the tribes in jail. campus protected me. You were damn near the pod boss in there, Dale. D Dale, were you like the the king of the wood pile, the shot caller? I I was the chief wood. Okay. I didn't know what a wood was until I went to yep. prison. Exactly. The chief wood. Chief wood. And on that. Oh, yeah. I'm an old white dude. <laughs>